Yo guys, Superior Dave here coming at you from the corner of my living room. If you couldn't tell, I recently got a new standing desk as well as a new camera, all thanks to your support. And I thought it would be fun to take a step out from the green void where I normally film these videos and welcome you all into my home. And you know, this is it. This is the corner of our living room. But yeah, let me know what you think of this for the videos. If you like it, great, I'll keep doing it. If not, I will force myself back into my green void and you'll never have to see my home again. But anyways, now for the real reason why you guys are here. It's been roughly a week since the nerves have dropped. And since then the meta has undergone quite a bit of change. So I just wanted to give you guys five superior post nerf decks that you could play so you could kick butt on ladder. These decks I've chosen based off of like HS replay stats as well as like what I've been seeing on Twitter and just my own personal experiences in top 500 legend ladders just so you have some context here. And if you want to see like any deck guides for these decks, please let me know down in the comments and I will make that happen. And without further ado, let's get down to business with these decks. First up, we have what is shaping up to be the like meta defining deck at high legend at the moment. And that is Rush Warrior. As you guys know from my last deck guide, I am so bullish on Rush Warrior. I think it's just such a good deck and it's just a lot of fun too. But instead of showcasing the list from that video, I'm gonna be showing off a no hands gamers list that I hit rank five legend with. Uh, this is like one of the best mid range decks that we've had in Hearthstone for a while now because it's just so dang flexible. You can curve out like one drop, two drop into three drop against like more aggressive decks and really contest those early game boards. Or you can play like a bit of a longer game where you like you buff minions and overwhelm like slower decks with like these super chonky rush minions. I've been playing a lot of this deck just off stream and destroying with it. And I really like the addition of the Gnarks for like that early game pressure, but I'm not as sold on the Shield of Honors personally. So instead I took out one of the Shield of Honors and I snuck ETC back into the list because I think he's just so important for winning those slower matchups. And I personally like having like that extra reach. And I've also been seeing other people like at High Legend running ETC in their list. So I think that's just going to be how this deck evolves. But you know, at the end of the day, Rush Warrior at its core is so strong. It might be the best deck in the game. Like all the Rush minions allow you to just clean up against board based decks while Troublemaker and Alex Straza give you some solid top end to be competitive against the slower decks in the meta right now. So overall, whatever version of this deck you decide to play, you're probably going to do pretty well because it's just that good at the moment. Okay, next up, we've got an interesting take on Paladin and that is Bull Bents' Aggro Paladin that uh, Jackie Chan piloted to rank 25 legend. I played a bit of this deck on stream and it feels pretty pretty darn strong. You have like this aggressive early curve of a annoying to deal with minions that allow you to just run away with games if your opponent has a slow start because you can just buff those minions and snowball super hard. I would say like that Crab Rider is the most important of these minions because it has wind fury. So like any like buffs you throw on it, it basically just gets like double the value. Uh, plus you can like play Argent Protector to give it divine shield so you can like value trade and then like continue to go face with the Crab Rider. Just it's all around really powerful stuff that's just again super annoying to deal with. And even even if you somehow get pushed off the board, you don't even care because you've got Hammer the Naru so you can like develop a threat that your opponent like frankly has to deal with. All the while you can just continue to smack them in the face like every turn with that weapon. And what I particularly like about this list is the inclusion of the Argent Fragger Blessing of Authority Wombo combo because it basically forces your opponent to clear off all of your minions just turn five onwards because you can punish them so hard if they can't. Uh, and I'd say like, you know, these sorts of decks usually are weak to like spells, particularly like AOE and removal, but you know, this deck doesn't care because it runs the Ogre Mancer, which, you know, it protects your board and it makes your already annoying minions just like that much tougher to remove. Now, when the dust settles, I don't know if this deck is going to end, end up being better than Secret Paladin because that was like a really strong deck, but I will say that this deck slaps hard and you, you can definitely do some climbing if you like want to play it on ladder. Okay, now moving along, next up we've got Vicious Syndicate's Face Hunter list, which is proven to be a fairly strong deck out of the gates post nerfs just due to the, the meta being very favorable for it. You know, you had all these people experimenting with Warlock day one of the nerfs and all these Face Hunters came in and were just like, yo Warlock, we don't like Ticketus, get that out of here. And they just sort of smirked all the Warlocks away and now, you know, Warlock, you know, don't, don't play Warlock guys, it's pretty bad right now. But yeah, that, that's sort of why like you've been seeing like a lot of Face Hunter just doing well these this, this past week. But I think on top of that, there's still like a lot of power behind this deck. Uh, not only do you have like the aggressive early game curve to like smork people down, but you also have like uh, like solid mid game threats as well with like Warsong Wrangler into Trampling Rhino plays. And you know, a buffed Rhino is pretty great. It allows you to like trade with a minion, but it's even better because even though you're trading, you still get to send like a nice chunk of damage at your opponent's face, which Hunter loves. Then on top of that, you know, the Man Crick uh, Bear Kotobane interaction is actually working as intended now, so you can tutor up Mancrick's wife with Barrack to apply like a lot of pressure in the mid game while also drawing some damage spells. Again, just all, all, all around, like this deck has solid mid game on top of like an already stellar like aggressive early game curve. And, it, and I think this makes it, this like version of uh, Face Hunter just quite formidable in the current meta game. I will say though, I do see it losing some ground over the coming weeks due to the rise of Paladin. People are like, yo, Paladin's still good. I'm gonna play Paladin to counter all these hunters. But I think this deck will still 
still have a place in the meta because it sort of keeps some other decks in check. Now, moving on to a deck that is the total opposite of Face Hunter. Uh, next up, we've got Gabby's Control Priest that he hit Rank 1 Legend with. Uh, I want to highlight this uh, deck specifically because I feel like people are currently sleeping on Priest at the moment. I think it's unassumingly one of the best classes on ladder right now. Uh, like, Control Priest is favored against Rush Warrior, which is the deck to beat right now on ladder. But then in addition, it, it also does well against like Aggro Paladin as well as Face Hunter, which are like the next best decks. So basically, like the only like really unfavored matchup for this deck is Control Warlock, which as you know, we mentioned with Hunter, you don't really see that much of Control Warlock anymore because it just gets farmed by every other popular deck. So I think Control Priest is shaping up to become one of the, like the big checks in the metagame to all these like powerful board-based decks we're seeing pop up. As for how this deck plays out, you basically just remove stuff until your opponent gets sad and concedes uh, because we just have removal for days. As well as like a couple like really powerful tempo plays like Zyrella with like any sort of healing or like Blade Master Samurai with Apotheosis being like a couple of the stronger ones because you can like just clear off your opponent's board while also developing like a threat of your own. Uh, for games where you're like your opponent just refuses to concede, you've got Ysera for value and pressure and then like Cthune just for that inevitability or again for that that stubborn salty opponent who refuses to concede even though they probably lost. Let's be real, we've all seen that before. And now moving on to the final deck, we have an oldie that was nerfed but looking at the meta these past few days, it's definitely primed to be making a comeback on ladder and that is Spell Mage or No Minion Mage or whatever you call this deck. Uh, so yeah, this deck was nerfed but it's still really good and I think people like weren't playing it after the nerfs because there's just so much Hunter on ladder and Hunter sort of farms this deck. But now we're getting to a point where Rush Warrior is the deck that's dictating the meta and Spell Mage actually does quite well against Rush Warrior. And it also beats the best Rush Warrior counter that's emerged and that is con the Control Priest list we were just talking about. So I think Spell Mage is again primed to be making a comeback on ladder. And this is the standard list from before the nerfs that I've been encountering like a fair amount in the past few days on ladder. Uh, it plays out like exactly the same as before but you just can't scam aggro matches with Deck of Lunacy as easily because you know Deck of Lunacy just comes down later now but it's still like a really good tool for those slower matchups and you know all this is okay because like spell mage has a lot more going for it than deck of lunacy it's still like a powerful burn based deck that can mana cheat and also just generate like random cards to scam opponents that way plus with like the nerf to jandis uh, a pexis blast receives like a shadow buff which only stands to like help spell mage find its footing in this evolving meta we're in and I strongly believe that this deck will find its footing in the meta. Even though it's like a rank 3 deck when you look at Diamond to Legend stats on HS Replay, when you filter the top 1000 Legend, it's a solid tier 2 deck. And traditionally, the, the meta moves like, like a bit faster with these higher ranks, and so I think as the meta trickles down to the lower ranks, you're gonna see the meta shift more, and it's gonna become more favorable for Spell Mage. And I think I would like I wouldn't be surprised if by next week, you know, Spell Mage is also a tier two deck at just like the general Hearthstone ranks. So to bring it all home with Spell Mage, yes, the deck was nerfed, but I think the meta is becoming even more favorable for it. So I think it's still gonna be good, especially in the weeks to come. But anyways, those are the superior decks. So uh, let me know down in the comments if you want to see any deck guides for any of these decks I talked about, and also let me know if you like these types of videos. And you know, I'll do more of them. And before you click away make sure to like the video for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe so you can be superior and my cat will really appreciate it. There you go. Thanks so much for watching guys. As always, I really do appreciate it. Stay superior and I'll see you next one later.